Lord, listen. I'm so excited about this. I, I just can't hardly contain myself. What would you do right now? What would you change right now? If you knew next week there was going to be a need for you to cast out devils. What would you do right now in the name of Jesus if you knew that this weekend you were going to heal the sick? What would you do different? What would you do different right now? Right now, think about it. If this Sunday you were called upon to prophesy, <laughs> oh glory to God! Come on, come on, come on! I want I want to challenge you right now to stop thinking of yourself as unusable. Oh shikadama koreba, hallelujah, <clears throat> hallelujah. Thank you, Overseer Ryan. Yes, 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 Dr. Ray Shipman. Good morning, son. Good morning. What would you do right now if I brought you on camera and said prophesy? What would you do? What would you do right now if I said, I just received a huge investment seed. And I need 40 people that will go with me to London in two weeks. Would go with me to Europe in the next two weeks. What would you do? What would you do? You, I'm talking to you. Right now, if I said I need five pastors in some of our network churches and I'm sending you out Saturday morning, what would you do? Oh, what would you do if I said, I need to send you away for the next 90 days to help me plant a church. And I need you to shepherd this flock. Help me to build it. What would you do? What would you do if I right now stood you up at the altar and I said, every person that comes in front of you, get them baptized in the Holy Spirit. What would you do? <laughs> Whoa, Patricia Henderson, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What am I asking of you? I'm telling you this morning as I was seeking the Lord, praying over my voice, praying over you, praying over class. Are you free enough financially to go? Leave your job. Are you free enough in your relationships that you could be reassigned? Are you free enough emotionally? <laughs> what would you do if I said there is an amazing opportunity for you in the next 48 hours to come and go with me on crusades and you will be gone for the next six months. <laughs> Many of you are giving me religious answers. I don't want religious answers. I'm asking you by the leading of Holy Spirit. How many people in the body actually expect and 
are preparing to be used today. Today. Not after you've counseled. Not after you have spoken with 17 people. <laughs> Shipman say, let's go. I know, babe, we can go. <laughs> Shipman and I can go right now. But for those of you that have never considered it, I'm speaking to you. I am speaking to you right now that that's how quick revival can begin. Whoa, glory to God. That is how quick the harvest field can open up. That is how quick a move of God can begin. <laughs> Pastor John Davis says, I go with you. Hallelujah, John Andrew. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to hear the, the urgency. I want you to hear it. Because that's how God gave it to me this morning. How many people in the body of Christ are really equipped to go to work? How many of you are really equipped mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually to be used in this end time move of God physically? Are you physically fit? Are you tied to dialysis? Are you tied to medication? Are you tied to hospital visits? Are you tied to a job? <laughs> when the Spirit of the Lord speaks to me like this, I don't take it lightly. I don't profess to be a, a prophet, but I see, <laughs> I hear. My seeing is not as prophets from the space of that gift, but from the space of the apostle in terms of the foundations and what must happen for the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor and teacher to be ready. Yeah, woo, Joyce Watkins, good morning. Rhonda Tuck, good morning. Joel, good morning. I do see. <laughs> yes, sir, I've been seeing. And I hear. I hear. And he that has ears to hear must hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Many of you are afraid to take the mic. Many of you have never prophesied openly. Many of you have never laid your hands on anyone sick. I'm telling you, get yourself together. I'm telling you to prepare. I'm telling you to invest in reading books, invest in getting your knowledge expanded. Glory to God, invest. This is the time now for you to be physically fit, emotionally fit, mentally fit, financially fit. This is the hour of visitation. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. This is the hour of visitation. Are you ready? Are you really, really ready for an outpouring of the move of the Holy Spirit? Are you really ready? Glory to God. Remash Kriyoshi. Oh, glory, glory. Listen. I was listening to Dr. Chavis this morning, Christine, and I was listening to her as she was praying. And it was the identical thing. She prays much more fluently than I, but I see, I hear. And as she was praying, my belly was leaping. Because I'm telling you, 
the hour of visitation is upon us. <laughs> Woo, Shibando Reba, are you mentally prepared? Are you physically prepared? Are you financially prepared? If you knew that right now, there was a need and opportunity for you. For you, you, not just me. But I need 100 people to go with me. I need 50 people to go with me. There is an opportunity for an outpouring of the spirit in Venezuela. Do you have a passport? Do you even have a passport? I'm on my way to Colombia. I need to know, in South America, are you ready? Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, Dr. Thea. God bless you, Kendra. Can your family maintain while you are gone? Do you even have a passport? Glory to God. Oh, our hour of visitation is upon us. We are in it. We are in it. We are in it. And how many of you are really ready? And you are, if not ready, you are preparing yourself. Don't give me religious answers. Some of you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit for 20 or 30 years. Some of you have already been, been seeking the Lord for opportunity to be used. And the door opens. Are you ready? How much baggage do you have? How much baggage? How much responsibility? How much, how prepared are you? Glory to God. Woo, shake Oh, shit, that I must see Dr. Green. Listen, I'm hearing God. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit this morning. And he said, we are in the hour of visitation. Ask them if they were now. Jesus was with them for three years and they were still not ready. Jesus was there for three and a half years. If you take off the half, take off that first year, he was there for at least two years. Walking the streets and nobody deserved. And everybody thinks it's just going to last. Everybody thinks, oh, it's just going to be. It's just, it ain't going nowhere. I can get myself together. I can do this. I can do that. No, it was gone. He was gone in three years. The window closed in three years. Whoa, shkadaba, shkadosia. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many of you are genuinely ready for the hour of visitation? I'm telling you, share this, share this. I need you to share this. Oh, glory to God. How many of you are really ready for the hour of visitation? Not to watch it, not to observe it, but to be actively engaged in it. Oh, that's Anika. Three years he was gone. In three years, a move can come and go. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. Whoa. Whoa, in three years, he was gone. He was gone. They had waited for 42 generations. They had waited and anticipated in this season of Lent. They were anticipating. But when he came, they didn't recognize him. They didn't think he would come in that manner. They didn't expect the Christ to show up as a baby in Bethlehem. They didn't expect him to be humble and meek and lowly. They wanted an empire. They wanted a king. They wanted someone that was going to be boisterous and loud. He didn't come that way. And in three years, the window opened 
and the window closed. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah, Tanya. She said, after December camp meeting, these sessions are hitting differently. They must. They must. I know that God has called me to prepare a people who are ready for this end time. But what if it started tonight? <laughs> Woo, are you ready? Can you move that swiftly? Do you have your passport? Do you have your physical body in shape? Can you run with Bishop Vaughn for the next six months? Can you hang with me? Will you get tired and sick and weary and mad? If there's no money to pay you, if we go because we go by faith, are you ready to survive? Will things at home die? Will things at home implode because you're not ready? If you have to change your diet, because maybe where we go, the foods that you are accustomed to, they don't have. Are you finicky? Can you eat what is put before you and bless it? Are you finicky and nitpicky? Can you get along? Are you religious? That when I take you into these places, you will be judgmental and critical. Or are you open enough for the move of Holy Spirit to use you? Are you biased? Are you too traditional? Are you too narrow-minded to think that God could use when you get in that space, what God is doing. <laughs> Come on, Dr. Tanny. Can you hang with me? Can you go with me in the village? Can you ride with me from airport to airport? Do you pack too much? Have you learned to pack lightly? I'm talking to somebody right now by the spirit of God. Oh, you have enough money in the bank. You have enough money <clears throat> that things, can you leave your job? Are you attached to a house? Are you attached to buildings? Are you attached to people that you're not free enough to move? They miss their time of visitation. He was right in their midst. He ate with them. He walked among them. He spoke to them every day. And yet they missed it. Can you right now, if I said, I need you, come go with me for the next six months. Are you sex crazy? Are you sex addicted? Can you do without it? <laughs> Don't be married for me. I hope. <laughs> Are, 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 you, are you addicted to certain things? You can't have it unless you function. You can't function without it. Do you have to be always comfortable? Are you able to be used of God in the end time move? You have nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Charlotte, I feel it. Whoa, glory to God, I'm telling you. Speaking of the Archbishop, he would call me. He said, Coletta, yes, sir. We're going to Venezuela, when, sir? Monday. Okay, sir. Are you ready? Can you, can you pick up and move like that? Because there's a move. Because you are preparing yourself you're not just saturating your mind with intellect. You're not just saturating your mind with knowledge, but you are preparing. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, glory to God. Who am I talking to? If I'm talking to you, put me, me, me. If I'm talking to you, put in the chat, me, you're talking to me. And if you're not as ready as this, take this as a warning. Take this as a warning. Take this as what they call an advisement. That this is the hour of Holy Spirit. This is the era of Holy Spirit. And he, Holy Spirit, is about to blow our minds. He can't use angels. Holy Spirit cannot use angels. He must use mortals. He's always used people. And the will of God cannot be done in the earth without human engagement. Glory to God. Is your, are your affairs in order? Are your affairs in order? If you don't get back for a year, are your affairs in order? Can you move like that? Can you move fluidly like that? So that it's time when it's time. Glory to God. You don't need nine people to agree. You've got everything ready because you've been preparing yourself. Oh, who am I talking to? Am I talking to you? He was talking to me. He said, I'm about to pour out my spirit. I'm pouring out my spirit. And what you have not seen, you're about to see. And what you have read about, you're about to experience. I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Set your house in order. Set your business in order. Set your affairs in order. And many times when people hear me talking like this, and say, oh, that's just for Bishop. No, it's for all of you who can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We sang a song in the, in the tent meeting <clears throat> about moving with the cloud. Glory to God. Glory <laughs> Glory to God. We, 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 we sang this song. And the way God moved, the way God moved, it, it was just so amazing to us to see in that song how God began to move, how the Spirit of God began to move in that song. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. And how, as we sang that song, <laughs> oh, glory to God, we saw how the, the, the whole tent would just, would just rock. It, 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 it was, let me just read the words. So let your spirit be free and let your heart be at rest. Come. Let us move all together. And if you follow where he leads, he will meet every need. Mm. Move with the cloud. Move with the cloud. It said the cloud of glory is moving. Move with the cloud. Hallelujah. Move with the cloud. Ish, get up. Oh, the cloud of glory is moving. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of a cloud to guide them. And by night, he gave them the pillar of fire. Wow, wow, wow. To guide them, to keep them, to move them. <laughs> Whoa, good morning, Lisa Smith. Good morning. So let your spirit be free and let your heart be at rest. Come, let us move all together. <laughs> oh, glory to God. If we follow where he leads, 
He will meet every need. Glory to God. Move with the cloud. <laughs> Move with the cloud. I'm telling you, God is speaking to us right now. God is speaking to us. And when we began to sing that song, <laughs> I could feel the people getting into it by the spirit, but not really paying attention to the instruction. God speaks to Moses and he tells the children of Israel, don't camp any place too long. <laughs> Glory to God, that when you see the cloud move, you have to be willing to move. You have to be free to move. Said, pack lightly. Don't carry a lot of stuff with you. <laughs> because you may be someplace for six months. And you may be someplace else for a day. Are we ready? Are we genuinely ready? Are we expecting it? the body of Christ, to become super engaged in this last day move. I'm ready. <laughs> I am so excited about it, I'm telling you. And I pray that you are not discouraged, that you are not discouraged by this, that you understand that there is nothing wrong with getting ready. Praise God. <laughs> that there is nothing wrong with getting ready in the era of Holy Spirit. In the era of Holy Spirit, you may not get a warning. In the era of Holy Spirit, you may not be able to take everything with you. You may not be able. <laughs> well, glory to God. We sing that song, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me, but are you ready? Oh, I can't get away from that. Are you ready? Are you ready to be used of God? What do you know about getting people baptized in the Holy Spirit? What do you know about leading people to Christ? What do you know about casting out devils? What do you know about healing the sick? Not from knowledge, from experience. I'm telling you, God is speaking to us this morning. God is speaking to us today. He spoke to me this morning. And he said, ask the people, are they genuinely ready for the time of visitation? Are we genuinely ready? Are we preparing for the visitation of Holy Spirit to hit the land, to hit the earth. I am, are you? And it can happen so quickly. And just as quickly as it happens, it can be over. Dr. Chavis said this morning that there is going to be a reinstitution of all night prayers. If I see that on the horizon, I have young daughters in the Lord that are prayer warriors. They're having all night prayers. I'm seeing it come back again. I'm seeing the fastings and I'm seeing the visitations of the Lord again in prayer. That's a sign. That's a sign that something is about to happen. That's a sign that something is about to happen. Whenever the earth begins to groan, whenever people began to take up the, the, the intercession, when they began to pray in the spirit, and they began to, to moan out to God, glory to God, God will not deny. Whenever the people are, are, are crying out and they're desiring to see, even this Pentecost in a pandemic is a sign that God is up to something. God is up to something that even in the pandemic that God is pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. We're in labor, it's a travailing. And we are travailing in the spirit now through this pandemic. And that God is doing some things, God is doing some things that we cannot see. Are you 
ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you personally ready? Not your church, not your denomination, not your pastor, not your bishop, not your apostle, not your overseer. Are you ready? Not is my church ready? Not is my denomination ready? Not is my bishop ready? No, am I ready? Am I ready to engage the visitation of Holy Spirit in the era of Holy Spirit? Am I ready? Am I ready? I want to see it. I want to, I want to, I want to see miracles. I want to see, but am I ready to be the one God uses? Hallelujah. Is your heart right with God? Is your heart right with others? Do you need to repent? Do you need to close up some things? Do you need to, to let go of some things? Do you need to move forward? All of these are the steps of preparing for your visitation. Glory to God. Are you really ready? <laughs> you talk about living by faith, but are you really ready to live by faith? Are you really ready to move out into what God is asking of you? Glory to God. Do you need to make peace with anybody? Do you need to make peace with yourself? Do you need to make peace with your past? Do you need to make peace with your mistakes? Do you need to make peace with the problems that you may be having? What do you have need to do right now mentally and emotionally so that there is nothing that holds you back, that there is nothing that moves you or that distracts you? Are you ready? You see, there, 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 there's some things that may not be visible. There may be some things that you may need to do emotionally. Some of you may need to repent. Some of you may need to, you saw your mistakes, make peace, make peace. Make peace, make peace. Glory to God. Oh, Hashem. Do you need to make peace with anybody as you are going? <laughs> I see you, Kelly. God bless you. Oh, Celeste, are you ready? I just feel God. I can't get, I can't even get to my notes. <laughs> Listen to this, lay-orientated leadership. Lay-oriented leadership. Lay-oriented leadership. That the leadership that we are going to see in this visitation of Holy Spirit will come from the laity. It will come from the laity. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Lay leadership. You must get it in your mind that the top heavy leadership model is being dismantled and that the saints, the body of Christ must rise up to a place of usability. That you must rise up to a place of freedom. That you must rise up to a place of the fulfillment of Christ that the whole body the whole entire body of Christ globally, worldwide, is usable by the Spirit of God. It wasn't just kings in the upper room. It, it wasn't the noble. It wasn't any of those. Let's, let's, let, me, let me just show you a scripture that God really began to deal with me about. And I want you to go to 1 Corinthians for just a moment. Grab your paper Bible. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Watch this. Mm, mm, mm. I love this scripture. For the message of the cross, I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, is foolishness to those who are perishing. Hold on, let me get a little tea. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Watch this. For it is written in verse 19, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Whoa, come on, Maria. Whoa, my God. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Oh, he spoke, God. Who is God talking to? Where is the wise? Where is 
the scribe? Where is the disputers of this age? Has not God made the foolish the wisdom of this world? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, see Robin? Oh, glory to God. Listen, listen, listen. For since in the wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians chapter number 121, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. The Jews requested a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, a stumbling block. To the great foolishness. <laughs> but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. <laughs> Watch this. Verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Oh, glory to God. Anybody, anybody hear me? For you see your calling that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Oh, 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 oh. oh glory to God. Oh, God, so who's called? Not many wise, not many noble, not fancy folks, but the common, the common, the ordinary, the one without a high school diploma, the one that doesn't speak good English. Who's called? Oh. <laughs> and God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Verse 28. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised has chosen. <laughs> Whoa, glory to God. Glory to God. Listen, the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. <laughs> Can I just read that again? Can I just read that again? And I know that I'm among them. Glory to God. Glory to God, I, I, I'm among them. I'm among the foolish. I'm among those that are common. The only difference is that I prepared myself to be used mentally, emotionally, physically. Not many wise. <laughs> According to the flesh, not many mighty. Not many noble are called. Please circle that in verse 28. First Corinthians chapter number one, verse 26. I'm sorry. For you see your calling that not many wise. Stop discounting you. I just heard that. Oh, Kimberly, I'm among them. Christine, I'm among them, baby. Oh, glory to God. I'm among them. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Amen. If it was based on knowledge, I'd be disqualified. If it were based on wealth, I'd be disqualified. If it were based on race, I'd be disqualified. If it were based on gender, I would be disqualified. Whoa, Dr. Bradford, listen to me. I feel God in this place. Whoa, glory to God. I would be disqualified. But in the era of Holy Spirit, in the era of Holy Spirit, 
God is taking the foolish things to confound the wise. <laughs> Ooh, Shekataba, stop discounting you. Stop eliminating you from the move of God. Stop acting like God can't use you. You're too old. You're too dark. You're too light. You don't have the money. You don't have the intellect. You don't have the degree. Just stop discounting you. The era of Holy Spirit is all inclusive. Everybody that wants to be used will be used. Oh, <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Your denomination won't hold you back. Your gender won't hold you back. Your color, your ethnicity won't hold you back. In this last day move, in the era of Holy Spirit, the, the noble will not be the ones in the forefront. I hear you, Holy Spirit. The wise will not be in the forefront. Hallelujah, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God with the common, the foolish, the laity, those that have been dismissed, marginalized, those that have been excluded by your denominational politics. Oh, glory to God. It's going to be a flip, baby. It's going to be a flip. It's going to be a flip. Those that are in the front will be in the back. Those that are in the back will be in the front. It's going to be a flip. In the air of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be a flip. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, shikadabha. For you see, I, 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 I'm rocking. I don't even, I can't stop. Praise God. Not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. Nobody saw a Harriet Tubman. They didn't see her coming. <laughs> they didn't see a Martin Luther coming. They didn't see it. They didn't see, they didn't see a little lady tied, sitting in the back of the bus. One day she said, I'm not getting up. They didn't see her coming. They didn't see her coming. Every major move, no major move, whether it's socially, economic, political, no move has ever happened because someone was famous. <laughs> Mother Rosa said, I'm not getting up today. Okay? Nobody saw them coming. Nobody expected a little girl, a little unknown person to lead millions out of slavery. And she said, I could have led more. They just didn't know they were slaves. Why can't God use you? To start a revolution in your in your in your home, in your community, in your time here in the earth. Stop discounting you. Oh, Rebashki Andesh, They never saw it. They never saw it. They never saw a Martin Luther get so upset with the dead work church that he would dare to confront them and nail on the door his theses. Nobody saw John Wesley or Charles Wesley coming. Nobody saw these people. Nobody expected an Amy Simple McPherson. Nobody saw Oral Roberts. Nobody saw these people coming. They were used by the spirit of God to confound the wise. Nobody saw a Bensonita Hosa coming. Thrown out in the alley on the heat with, with garbage to revolutionize a continent. <laughs> Nobody saw it coming. Everything that is happening in the African diaspora now is because one man who was thrown out and discarded got wind of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
and gave his life and was filled with the Holy Spirit and began a revolution, a Pentecostal revolution on a continent. Nobody saw him coming. I heard Bucky and these guys, they came late. Nobody saw a little Hebrew man beginning a revolution that now Pentecostalism in Africa is the largest growing movement of all. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw. Nobody sees you coming. Nobody sees me coming. I'm too inconspicuous. I'm Baptist. I'm a girl. I'm a bishop. I'm too. No way can God use her to raise up an end time. Whoa, nobody saw a Charles Mason coming. Nobody saw a William Seymour coming. Nobody saw these people coming. Nobody expected their obedience to produce an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Nobody saw them coming. Nobody saw them coming. Nobody saw any of these major figures that have been used in the era of Holy Spirit to promote the gospel around the world. Nobody saw the church of God in Christ. 800 million people. Nobody saw that. From one little Baptist preacher that went to Azusa or would use a William Seymour. Blind. Illiterate. Who would use him? Who would use this? Who first had to sit on the outside of the door because they wouldn't let him in because he was so segregated. But he was so desperate for God. He was so desperate for a move of God that he sat on the outside until he was filled with the Holy Spirit, began to pray, and went to a little place at Bonnie Bray, and then on to Azusa. <laughs> Nobody saw him coming. Nobody expected him to come. And nobody is expecting you to come. Nobody is looking for you. Nobody expects you to rise above your failures and your mistakes and your doctrine and your gentrification. Nobody is expecting you to rise. They've heard your excuses. They've heard your, your testimony, your past. They know your mistakes. But God is calling the foolish to confound the wise. Oh, God is calling the foolish to confound the wise so that there is lay-oriented leadership. People who touch people, nobody expected Azusa the last three and a half years. And they tried to tear it down. They tried to rip it out of Pentecostal history. Ah, yes, we can point to the Oyedipos and we can point the, to the Kamanis and we can point to uh, Robert Kendanji. We can point to them, but they came after one little African. And I sat at his table slept in his bed. I ate in his home and did not know the greatness of the deposit that was being given to me that I can give to you. Nobody saw me coming. I didn't come from the finest of academia. I didn't come from the best of scholarship. I'm a nurse. I'm just a nurse that God spoke to. And I was ready I was prepared. I sought for the Holy Spirit for 20 years. Are you ready? Are you even thinking that God is going to use you? <laughs> Woo! Get rid of your foolishness. 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 Get rid of your carnality. Get rid of your twerks and quirks. Get rid of it. 
prepare for a outpouring of Holy Spirit like never before. <laughs> oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Those of you that want to begin to give, you can begin to give. Those of you that want to begin to give, begin to put your seed. Glory to God. You can begin to put your seed in it. Sow a seed. $5 seed. Sow your seed now. Glory to God. You want to go. Glory to God to our website. You can do that. Whatever you need to do, get a seed in the ground. Get your $5 seed in the ground. Glory to God. God is speaking to us. God, God is speaking to all of us to set our affairs in order. Your unbelief is showing. God can't use me. God wouldn't use me. Why wouldn't he? You're filled with his spirit. You're a candidate. You feel with his spirit. God will use you. You have no more excuses. You have no more excuses. Begin to prepare yourself. Begin to prepare yourself. Begin to prepare yourself for the end time move of God. Not to watch it, not to look at it, but to be extremely engaged. Where do you see yourself in it? <laughs> oh my God, come on, let's get ready for communion. As we get ready for our communion, I want you to agree with me now, glory to God, that I am going to be ready for the visitation. I am not going to miss my hour of visitation. Being foolish, being careless, being reckless, being carnal, being unprepared. We take this today. This is the body of the Lord Jesus and we break it. And we eat it together. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ish, mm -mm -mm. see. Glory to God. And we take the cup. And even now, glory to God, we agree that we are redeemed. We agree that we are qualified. We agree even now with the new covenant that is in his blood. We drink it now together. Hallelujah. I want you to put, I want you to put right now I want you to put right now in the chat, I will not miss my hour of visitation. I want you to write it by faith. <clears throat> I want you to write it. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Going to be ready, Keani. Absolutely. Laura Dangerfield. Thank you. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to start practicing prophesying. I want you to get in the mirror. Begin to practice. Speak in tongues. And then interpret. What do you hear? Start practicing. Start preparing. I will not miss. Overseer right. I will not miss. D. Dwayne Kemp. Write it. Bishop Jackson. I will not miss my hour of visitation. <laughs> oh, glory to God. When I feel this heavy mantle on me, I know God is waking up the sleeping giant in you. God is asking you to stop talking foolish. Stop talking small. Stop thinking small. Consider yourself as an agent in the era of Holy Spirit. Consider yourself an ambassador. Glory to God. Get yourself ready. Prepare thine house. Glory to God. Oh, shake up. I will not miss my hour of visitation. Write it down. I will not miss my hour of visitation. Oh, How many of you felt the shaking today? How many of you know God is speaking to you? You've got to have your right mind. You got to be emotionally prepared. Some of you are too religious to be used. You're not spontaneous enough. You're not fluid enough. 
Break those habits now. Some of you are needy. You got to have somebody with you all the time. You, you got to see people that you know all the time. Stop it. Break those habits. Make peace with your fear. Make peace. Say, fear, you've had me. But today, I walk away from you. Make peace with your mistakes. Make peace. Make peace with your past. Make peace with your enemies. Make peace with yourself. And prepare yourself in this era of Holy Spirit. Glory to God. <laughs> I got to go. Listen, would you like, tag, and share this all over your social media pages? And would you please hashtag Pentecost in a pandemic? Get your seeds in the ground. There's so many ways to give. I put it on the screen for you. You can do Zelle, which is Carletta Vaughn at gmail.com for this end time move of God. PayPal.me, go tell it ministry. PayPal.me, Carletta Vaughn. Cash app, dollar sign, Carletta Vaughn. You can give in a multitude of ways, but don't let this day pass and you don't put a seed in the ground. $5 seed or whatever the Lord will speak to you in increments of five. Some of you can give 5,000, maybe 500. Maybe today was the breakthrough moment for you to say, my God, I can't be used. Then so, so. Seal what your revelation is by sowing your seed. I love y'all. I got to go. We'll be right back soon, 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 soon in a few days. Share this in the name of Jesus. This is so heavy upon me. I can't even let it go. That's how heavy this is upon me. And whatever you need to do, unpack. Unpack things. Unpack your minds. Glory to God. Unpack your emotions. Stop it. Become fluid. Become spontaneous. So if you overthink overthinking. Make peace with that in the name of Jesus. I love y'all. I got to go. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Mm.